Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, I want to spend a few minutes talking about this one question that I get asked a lot, and that is why use Yammer as an enterprise level social media platform? So I want to tackle this purely from an engineering standpoint and answer some questions and show you some facts that you need to be aware of to make that decision. Because if you fall in any of those categories, Teams does not work for that. You have to focus on Yammer. And then I'll also end with my take on this, is that why I would like to use Yammer for this scenario, which is the enterprise level social media platform. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So I want to start this discussion by this one question that gets asked all the time. And this is a legitimate question. It says, Daniel, why should I use Yammer when I'm already using Teams? And this comes from both from the business standpoint and from the engineering standpoint. Engineers could have actually gone ahead and spent a lot of time configuring their teams, all the policies, all the compliances, all the apps. And now we've got to go and do the whole thing for Yammer again. Can you tell me why I should even consider that? And great questions. But before we answer that from a technical standpoint, I want to spend a few minutes talking about what exactly is the fundamental difference between a Teams and a Yammer. So Teams is basically a real-time collaboration and communication for meetings, files, and app sharing. Emphasis over there is real-time collaboration. Collaboration could be a small group of people. Collaboration could be the one-on-one -on -one or one to a larger group of people. That's the one that I want you to keep an eye on. From a Yammer standpoint, it connects leaders, communicators, employees to build communities, share knowledge, and engage everyone, all members of your company. That is the key takeaway. Teams, collaboration, sure, real-time collaboration, but that's with a smaller group of people. Yammer, across everyone in your company, this can handle that. So what I want to do is actually spend a few minutes on this really nice documentation which has been there for years. And in fact, I've got the link down in the description below. Go ahead and take a look at it. But this is the first iteration of it. This is where the introduction of the inner loop and the outer loop happened. And it also talked about Outlook as a way to go ahead and actually have emails. But what I do like is this second iteration of it. This was actually the Yammer team took that Teams loop one and they actually went ahead and elaborated on that. So this is the one that I liked about, like about because the explanation that I just gave where you could actually have Yammer as the outer loop, but you can have everyone has access to it. So think of scenarios when you've got your executive teams, like the CEO teams, they can actually use Yammer as a tool for doing a real time ask me anything. People can go ahead, any employee in the company, everyone in your company can go to those communities and ask your executive teams any questions that they want. And the executive teams could keep, you know, keep themselves some limit that, hey, the answer, the answer to that question should be there in say 24 hours. You can use that scenario because remember, everyone in your company, they will have access to those Yammer communities. You could also do that for other scenarios. Ask IT anyone, ask HR anything, ask finance anything. Those are the type of scenarios where a department where everybody in your community is affected by them, everybody in your company can actually go and ask that. Yammer is the perfect place for that. Now think of also scenarios where the CEO is actually using Yammer and the live meetings to actually talk to the entire company in a live chat or in a live meeting. Now after all those decisions have been made or new announcements have been announced for the entire company, each businesses can actually go and take that information and then talk it at their team's level. And that's where the inner loop works in. It's also perfect for those projects because say a big project has been announced for the entire company and each of the departments are going to go handle subsections of those projects. Well, now that it's announced at Yammer at the entire all company level, each of those departments can now talk about those projects in their own teams and they can leverage all these other apps that they have access to. So I really like this explanation of what the inner loop and the outer loop is, and it explains where Yammer at a higher level works with teams on the inner level. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, say, Daniel, I'm already aware of this. Let's just jump into some of the engineering and some of the statistics standpoint. And stati from statistics, I actually mean some of the technical information that you need to be aware of. So here's a very simple table that I've actually gone and made available, is I'm gonna talk about certain features and I wanna tell you what are the limitations that from a team standpoint and a Yammer standpoint. And by the way, all of these informations are available in the Microsoft documentations whose links are put in the description below. So let's talk about a few one of them, all right? So the first one is number of org-wide team and community. 
Remember in the previous slide, I talked about the org wide where ask me anything from an HR or the financing or your executive team, your CEO team, those are considered org wide. In fact, when you even go and create a team, you have one of the options called org wide. What that means is that when somebody goes and looks for a team or looks for a community, they will see these org wides by default and they can go and join them by default because they don't have to go and request access. It is automatically open to all of them. So from a team standpoint, you can only go and create five of those org wide ones. However, there is no limit from a Yammer standpoint. Now, I know what some of you are thinking because it happened to me too. It's like, hey, Daniel, I was actually able to go ahead and make more than five org wide teams. And for that, I want you to keep an eye on something. It's quite possible you were able to do that is because your company hasn't crossed the 10,000 employee number limit. And think about that is because that is actually a limit. And I'll just talk about that in a few minutes. But the reason you were able to go ahead and make more than five is basically why, because my company limit actually only had 200 employees. Employees, I didn't have 10,000. And I'm thinking that's why I was able to make an org wide one. However, in your scenario, it could be something similar. You may not have hit that 10,000 and that's why you're able to keep more than five. Now, if you are able to go and do something like this, I'd be cautious of that because once you hit a certain number, you would actually be bound by that limit of only five. And if you've already crossed that five, some warning may come to you that, hey, some of them are going to be deleted. So just be very cautious of something like this. The team's org wide ones are only five. And if you've crossed that, make sure that you've got some agreement with Microsoft. But you don't have that any concerns from a Yammer standpoint. Now, number of members in a team or a community, this actually adds on to the one I just talked about. So if you had an org wide one, then you are allowed only 10,000 employees at an org wide. However, from a Yammer standpoint, you are allowed 500,000 employees for this org wide one over there. Now I'm putting the 25,000 as well because if these are regular community, uh, regular teams, you can add up to 25,000 members over there in your teams. So technically you could go through the long process of creating a org wide one like your HR or your finance or you know, other things. Uh, you will just have to go through the painstaking one of allowing each and every member access to it. Uh, but if the true org wide is people have see it and they can go in and become a member without any request. Well, if you're going to look at from that standpoint, from teams, you've got only 10,000 users limit over there. But from Yammer, you've got 500,000. Now, I don't know of companies who are actually 500,000 employees. Who knows? There might be some that I'm not aware of. But trust me, the majority of the people who don't hit 500,000, uh, they'll be completely fine. If, you know, even if they're hitting 250 or 300 or 350,000 employees, they can still use Yammer for an org wide type of a community. Um, and would not run into any limitations over there. Yammer is perfect for that. And this is a very important point. That moment you go ahead and cross that 10,000 employee limit, a number that you have, then you cannot use Teams for that internal org wide type of scenario. You've got to use Yammer. And this is one of the answers I tell all of the people who ask me that is the first question is, how many people do you have? And if you have more than 10,000, you've got to go ahead and start using Yammer from that standpoint. That is basically a non-negotiable scenario. You hit that number of 10,000 and higher, you've got to use Yammer for that. But I want to look at a few more. So number of teams or communities you can be a member of. So we're now down to you as a member of the user level. From a team's perspective, you can have access to 1,000 teams. But from a Yammer perspective, you can have access to 7,000 communities. Again, this number may not apply to you or you might just think Daniel just way over my quantity. But again, there are some of you com com communities which this does apply to you. And again, if you're starting to think about the differences of why Teams versus Yammer, then this is another number that you should be aware of. Because I do know large companies can have a lot of communities because they do have a lot of engagement by their employees. And that 1000 number that can be hit very easily. So right off the bat in Teams, you cannot have communities. You have to have Yammer for that because the Yammer number exceeds that 1000 by seven times because it's 7000 over there. Something that you should be aware of. Then the number of teams, communities a user can create. So over here, when it comes from a user standpoint, it's 250 teams. However, if you're an admin specific, if you are a global admin, then a global admin can go and create 5000 teams over there. 
Now, again, that's again from your standpoint. Does your community, have, does your company have that scenarios where users need that flexibility to go ahead and create so many more of these communities from a community discussion standpoint? Because if they do need more, more than 250, then again, Teams is not the place for that. They can go ahead and do that in that Yammer because Yammer has no limit. You can go and easily create over 250 and you don't have to be a global admin. As long as you've got access to go and create communities in Yammer, you can easily go and create 250. Now, the last piece I want to talk about from something just to understand is the number of owners and admin can have uh, both in Teams and Yammer and the number is the exact same. In a Teams community, I mean, in a Teams team, over there, the team's owner can have up to 100 owners just to make sure that there's enough over there. And from a Yammer community standpoint, a Yammer's ad, uh, community admin or also called as a network admin, over there you can have up to 100 people. And so that really helps to make sure that there is enough backup and that number also remains the same. So here is an overview of that key distinction between from a Yammer standpoint and a team standpoint and some of the big ones that will actually help you decide that, oh, I really need to consider Yammer because teams simply cannot handle that. But there's a few more that I want to talk about. So from a, Yammer, a team standpoint, it does not have the option for a single user to post updates for their followers. And let me explain to you what that means. LinkedIn is a great example of that. In LinkedIn, you can actually go and have people who will post updates about their career or about their new event that has happened in their life or whatever. You, they can actually go and post that as an update or a blog and then all of us in LinkedIn can actually go and follow them. Well, guess what? In Yammer, we can do that because Yammer has storyline. We can go and do the exact same thing where everybody can go and have their own stories posted in Yammer. And then all of us as followers can go and see what is this update that is this person is sharing because it could be very important from the company standpoint. It could be very important from a end user standpoint. I'll give you examples. There are each of these executive people that they will go and say my weekly status or my updates for this week. And guess what? They've actually been posting it on those regular places such as their own SharePoint site or their own SharePoint pages, which shows up in your SharePoint portal every day. Well, that's a place that they go and post that. But now they can actually go start doing that in the, in the Yammer. In Yammer, they can go and have their own storylines. And over there, by default, people can follow them. People can go and have a discussion with them so much more easier than all the heavy lifting that has to be done on other platforms when Yammer Storyline automatically does that. Remember, scenarios are similar like LinkedIn over there. See, this is another great example where you cannot do this in Teams. Yammer is now, it is available out of the box scenario. Now, I finally wanna end with my take on this because it's no longer one against the other, whether should I use Teams or should I use Yammer? they are both better together. They work so well in the collaboration because in Teams now, whatever that you use for Yammer, well, we can go and do that in Diva Engage. And here's some amazing scenarios that's happening that inside the Teams, you actually had what was Yammer Communities. Well, that Yammer Communities has switched over to Viva Engage. So in Viva Engage, all the discussions that you had directly at the higher level in your Yammer side over there. If you want to go and bring that over inside Teams also so that your in internal team, your departments, everyone can see that discussion going on, we'll bring it inside Teams. Let's see it directly in Teams. Or in Teams, you can do it both. You can have a side chat among your group and your group's discussion inside the Teams, but then you can also automatically just click over and go to your Yammer and directly work at the Yammer level over there. It is not either one or the other. They are both better together. And Viva Engage is powered by Yammer. So Yammer is not going away. Yammer is here to stay. And something you need to be aware of because once you start hitting those high numbers, you cannot have a org-wide discussion or replicate Yammer in Teams. You've got to switch over to Yammer. But if you're a diehard fan of Teams, well, go ahead and get that Yammer back inside Teams with Viva Engage. So I do hope that this video has broadened your mindset about the differences between Teams and Yammers and help you make a firm decision of how and when I actually do need Yammer because Teams cannot go ahead and give me that same functionality. And at the same time, the synergy between the two, that yes, you can have Yammer, but you can bring Yammer inside Teams using Viva Engage and still have the same collaborative discussions where you can have it at the company level, but you can also have it at a discussion level. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you've got any scenarios that this just doesn't apply, go ahead and put it in the comments below and I would love to address that in my future videos. But as always, keep using Teams and Yammer. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? 
Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.